Good evening and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals virtual meeting. As per Executive Order 202.28 by the Governor of the State of New York, the Town of Smithtown is required to continue hosting all public meetings in person, in which case we must prohibit physical public contact or public meetings can be held remotely via conference call or similar services. Additionally, per the executive order, the town continues to live stream, record and transcribe each meeting. As a reminder for any resident wishing to view tonight's meeting, you can do so by clicking on the agendas and meetings button on the homepage of the town's website at www.smithtownnewyork.gov. You are all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown zoning ordinances. And it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are requesting whenever possible. It's up to you to provide this board with precise and accurate information so we can make a decision based on the facts presented tonight. This board must consider the five area variance considerations in order to render a decision and they are as follows. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or a detriment to nearby properties will be created, <coughs> excuse me, by granting of the variance. Whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some other feasible method for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance. Number three, whether the request area variance is substantial. Number four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. And number five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the board, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the variance. Procedures for tonight's meeting. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. After your case is announced by Mr. Donatio, the moderator will connect you to the meeting so you can present your case to the board. <laughs> Once you have completed your presentation, if anyone on the board or in the planning department has any questions, they will be asked. Then any interested party who would like to speak on the case will be given one opportunity to do so. Then the applicant can come back. <coughs> then the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to any questions and concerns after which the case will be closed. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning the case. You can contact the planning department after 12 p.m. tomorrow for the status of your case. We do have two adjournments tonight. The first adjournment is case 18479, 20 Sunken Meadow Holdings, LLC. That case has been adjourned to September 14th. And the second case is case 18485, Marcelo Garcia, uh, 20, uh, 28 MCAP Drive, Smithtown, New York. That has been adjourned to September 28th. All right, Blaze, you can do the first meeting all right the first case on the agenda case number 18531 james freeman five dolores lane fort salonga the location of the property the east side of dolores lane 315 feet south of sunken meadow road the property is zoned r43 the applicant is requesting variances to increase the maximum height from 15 feet to 7 feet to increase the number of stories from one to two to reduce the minimum side yard from 24 feet to 12 feet previously approved, to reduce the minimum total side yards from 60 feet to 48 feet previously approved, to permit an accessory structure in the required side yard for a proposed 724 square foot two-story detached garage, the first floor 484 square feet, the second floor 240 square feet. 
Uh, could I have the applicant, please? Yes, hello. My name is James Freeman. Good evening, James. Uh, are you going to present your case tonight yourself? Yes, I am. Okay, fine. You can start anytime you wish. Okay, um, good evening. I don't see my uh, face on the screen. Can you see me? Yes, I can see you. Okay. This is my first Zoom meeting. Yes, uh, I'm James Freeman, 5 Dolores Lane, Fort Salonga. And um, I propose a, uh, to build a two-story, two-car garage on my side yard. Uh, I don't feel it impacts uh, environmentally at all. Since the, uh, the drainage would be affected as far as water down the driveway. Uh, and the, um, my neighbor to the south has uh, also there. The also what? I'm sorry? You're uh, I don't know if it's just on my end. Also what? My neighbor to the south has also. Yeah, her, yeah, her uh, driveway is also on that side, her garage and driveway. So it's really not uh, right up against um, bedroom windows. And they also have a lot of very high privacy shrubbery on that side. So I don't think it's a, an invasion of privacy in any way. <clears throat> it is a detached garage. Uh, the reason for the height is just for access to it. Myself, I'm 6'3". Uh, my wife plans to do some artwork up there, and we would use it to store a piece of the artwork and create possibly a small workshop up there for art. So... On the variance, it states 17 feet as the height. Uh, reality, the drawing is 16 and a half feet. I still have 12 feet uh, side yard on the one side. Uh, even though the garage has increased in size due to the fact that I pushed it closer to my house. So we still have six feet in between the house and the garage. Okay. Anything else you'd like to tell us or is that it? That's about it. It's a, a typical two car garage. Okay. Um, the workshop upstairs, obviously you're gonna have some electric up there. You're gonna have heat. No, no heat. No heat. Just uh, just any a plumb um, any plumbing? <clears throat> no, no plumbing either. Okay. Just some electric lighting. Okay. It's uh, it's not a work. It's an amateur hobby type studio. Hopefully. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No. No, no thank you. Uh, planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience that like to be heard on this application? No, Chairman. No? Okay. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. A motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, good night, James. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. The next case on the agenda is case number 18532, Alexander Caro, 141 Sunken Meadow Road, Northport. The location of the property, the north side of Sunken Meadow Road, 2,145 feet east of Kings Park Road. The property is zoned R43. The applicant is requesting a variance to permit environmentally sensitive lands to be altered where depth of groundwater is equal to or less than 10 feet for a proposed 20 foot by 40 foot in ground swimming pool. Uh, can I have the applicant, please? Good evening. 
Hello. Uh, good, evening. good evening. Mr. Carroll? Yes, how are you? Okay. Uh, are you going to present your case tonight yourself? Uh, I believe that his book is online. He's going to present the case tonight. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Uh, Dennis Cook is uh, supposed to be presenting for me tonight. Okay. He's on the call, Chairman. Okay. Do we, uh, Ms. Cook? Uh, Hi, how are you doing? Good evening, board. Can you hear me? Uh, I, can't, I can't hear him. Hi, right, do you see me? Do you hear me? I can't see him or hear him, really. I uh, try one more time with the sound. I can see you. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? That's I don't know why you can't hear me. Okay. Darlene, Sorry about that. that might be the internet. You yeah, one second. Darlene, is that good for you? We'll give it a try, Chairman. Okay. All right, Mr. Cook, you can go ahead whenever you want. Okay. Uh do you want my name and address for the record? Uh yes, please. I'm sorry. Not a problem. <laughs> uh, Dennis Cook, um, 8801 Shore Road, Brooklyn, New York, uh, 11209. I'm presenting the case for the uh, Carroll's tonight. Uh, they're proposing to add a pool to their backyard for family use. Um, it's, as you know, with COVID, uh, it's been tough to go anywhere. And due to the circumstances, they want, they want a pool so their whole family have something to enjoy in case we ever arrive, or God forbid, at a situation like this again. Um, <laughs> the issue with the pool, as we know, and as we stated, is that the water table is high in the area. It's higher than um, 10 feet, which is uh, permitted by code. It's only four feet, according to uh, the test hole performed by JPM Test Hole Services. Um, I like to note, though, that um, Two of the neighbors of the Caros, 135 and 147 Sunken Meadow Road, also have swimming pools that are built in, and they were permitted and approved. Uh, we checked that through FOIL, so there is precedent. Uh, and they're on the same side of the street, in the same, pretty much the same distance away from the uh, water source. Uh, I also like to add that uh, the pool meets all other zoning requirements requirements and setbacks. Uh, this is the only thing that we're going for a variance for. Um, and the uh, the property itself is uh, almost substantial size. So um, we feel that drainage shouldn't really be too much of an issue. Is there any questions from the board? I will ask. Does yeah. any anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No question. Okay. No. Uh, planning, any questions? No, thank you. No. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? Yes, Chairman. I'm going to call on Diane Carroll. I'm going to ask her to unmute. Good evening. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. If you can, just announce yourself, uh, spell your name, and also give us your address for the record. Sure, Diane Carroll. I'm residing at 15 Lower Road in Smithtown, New York. I'm very familiar with I'm so oh, I I'm so slow down. Can I can you say that again? Your address? For 15 Lower Road in Smithtown. I'm very familiar with this property. I was involved in the sale and purchase. And I just want to bring to this board's attention, as the expediter had stated, there are actually four houses on the same side, which abut against this creek, 147, 135, 131, and 123. All three have in-ground pools that abut this creek. In addition, this pool will not affect wetlands, creek, or vegetation. As the photos show, it is an open, uh, grasslands where there is not even a tree that is going to be disturbed by this. This is going to preserve and enhance the character of this neighborhood. Mr. Carroll has five children that would be provided an opportunity for passive as well as active recreational use of this nine in excess of nine acres of this property. This pool does not abut 
against the property to the left. If you're looking at this property, he will not even see the pool because as you can see from the layout, this pool is situated where the only thing to the left is the creek. So this neighbor will not be seeing, this neighbor will not be seeing the pool or be anywhere near it. To the right, and as you can see, there is substantial lands between Mr. Caro and this particular neighbor. So that neighbor will not be in any way affected or can even see a sight line. According to the variance rules, all of the intent for a variance is met here. Um, and I would ask, especially in light of the fact that this will not interfere in any way, shape or form with that water table, that this variance be granted. Thank you. All right, thank you, Diane. Is there anyone else that'd like to be heard on this application? Uh, Chairman, I do not have anyone else uh, in the chat function or with their hands up. I, I will just remind the public that if you do wish to be heard on an application, you could just add your name to the chat function or raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Cook, uh, since uh, Ms. Carroll's um, was very positive about the thing, I don't think you want to respond to it or do you? Or um, yeah, She said all that. You know, everything she said is true. And I, I appreciate her testimony very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Okay. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Cook, and thank you, Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have you too. Evening. The next case on the agenda is case number 18533, Robert S. Critelli, 14 Partridge Drive, Comac. The location of the property, the west side of Partridge Drive, 644 feet south of Rondi Drive. The property is zoned R15. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard from 45 feet to 40 feet for a proposed 275 square foot front porch. Uh, could I have the applicant, please? Yes, I'm here, Rob, Mr. Robert Cortelli. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, are you going to, Robert? Are you going to present uh, your case tonight yourself? No, Mr. John Bracco. Uh, I give him permission to represent my case tonight. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, John, are you here? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, could you introduce yourself, spill your last name, and give your address for the record, please? Certainly. Uh, good evening. John Bracco, Architect, 111 Railroad Avenue, Sayville, New York. And uh, on behalf of Mr. Critelli, uh, we're seeking uh, tonight um, a front yard variance for proposed covered porch. Uh, the subject parcel is in an R15 zone, which requires a 45 foot front yard setback. The proposed covered porch would leave a setback of 40 feet. We feel this relaxation is minor in nature and that it equates to only an 11% relaxation of the setback. In addition, uh, it is for an open covered porch, which the homeowner has no intention of ever enclosing, and he would be willing to have that as a stipulation to the approval. There is an existing similar covered porch uh, at 15 Raven Drive, which is the house diagonally behind him. Uh, the subject parcel, as well as uh, 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 around the subject parcel, there are many other uh, taller covered porticos in front of existing high ranches, both on his street and in the neighborhood. Uh, we do not believe this would be any sort of detriment to the neighborhood, but would only enhance the character of the street. Uh, therefore, we respectfully ask the board to grant the application. And if there are any questions, we'd be more than happy to try to answer them. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, no. thank you. No. Uh, planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? Uh, Chairman, I have a question from Alinda uh, Critelli. Can you spell that? C R I T E L L I. Thank you. Linda? Yes, hi. Um, 
Uh, my address is at 12 Partridge Drive in Comac, New York, um, which is right next door. I just have a, um, a quick question um, in regard to this. These variances that were originally set up, can you just, do you know, or um, can you familiarize me with the reasons uh, why they were originally set up to this? Blaze, would you like to respond to that? Uh, I will certainly try. <clears throat> the reason why um, the applicant is asking for a five foot front yard setback is because in the zoning district that you're located in, which is the R15 zoning district, you're required to have a minimum of a 45 foot front yard setback from your front property line to the front of your home. With the proposed porch, it's going to reduce that setback from 45 feet to 40 feet. So there's a difference of five feet, hence the reason why they're asking for the variance. Anything else, Linda? No, um, no. Um, so basically it's not for any reason, but just that, um, I guess that physical uh, reason, uh, it was set like that. There was no other like uh, major um, reasoning for that limit. Nope, just a setback for the zoning district. Okay. Thank you. All right, welcome. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Blaze. Uh, is there anyone, anyone else in the audience like to be heard on this application? Chairman, I don't have anybody else, but there were two uh, members of the public that just came in during the application. So I'll just, just ask anybody who did join that does want to speak on this to please just put their name in the chat or raise your hand. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Okay, I think we're clear. Okay, um, for those people that just joined us, we did have two adjournments tonight. Uh, the first adjournment was case 18479, 20 Sunken Metals Holding, LLC. That has been adjourned to September 14th. And the second one was case 18485, Marcelo Garcia. That has been adjourned to September 28th, so. Uh, with that said, can I have a motion to close the application, please? No. Oh, well. no. yeah, are you not having any questions on the, the um, Garcia case? It's not going to be hurt. Well, let me let me finish this and I'll get back to you, please, sir. One, one second. Um, motion, motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Um, thank you, John, and thank you, Robert. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Have a good night. Good night now. Uh, we are not going to hear the Marcelo Garcia case. Uh, they request an adjournment to, to September 28th. So at that time, we'll hear the case and we'll take questions. Let me ask you a question then. How many times can you keep adjourning this case still? Can, I, um, can you identify, can the speaker identify himself, please, Mr. Benz, if he's going to speak on the record? Sure. Kevin Barry. Uh, Thank could you. you spell your last name so we get it correct, Kevin? B-A-R-R-Y, 8 Stangle Place, Smithtown. Thank Barry, you. who's Barry? Kevin Barry. Okay. Are they across from us? Uh, what, what you can't have this question. Wait a minute. We have, Mr. we have Mr. Barry on the phone. And we're trying to answer his question. We usually, you know, we don't we don't uh, adjourn the meetings. It's requested by the applicant. Um, there could be sickness. There could be sicknesses. There could be. I'm getting to it. There could be sicknesses. Maybe the lawyer can't make it. We usually give them up to three adjournments. Three adjournments. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Okay, because I know there's a stop work order and work continues. And what the rumor is. Um, straight from the building department. Yeah. One per, we're talking to, to Mr. 
Mr. Uh, Barry. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I don't think that it's appropriate for someone to speak on an application from the public as it's not open and the, the applicant doesn't have an opportunity to hear or respond when okay. the case isn't open. I'm just asking a question. I don't think my... you're allowed to. Yeah. I, Mr. Chairman, I agree. The question about the adjournment was already addressed. Any other questions should be addressed when the application is on in September. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next case, please. Sure. <clears throat> the next case on the agenda is 18534 Vincent Pickford, 6 Country Lane Drive, Kings Park. The location of the property, the southeast corner of Country Lane Drive and Cedar Street. The property is owned R10. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the front yard on Cedar Street from 40 feet to 16 feet for a proposed 21 foot by 35 foot in-ground swimming pool. To reduce the front yard setback on Cedar Street from 40 feet to six feet for a proposed six foot high retaining wall. To decrease the setback of a six foot fence from a six foot retaining wall from six feet to zero. To increase the maximum height of a six foot fence on top of a six foot retaining wall from six feet to 12 feet. To decrease the minimum setback of a retaining wall to the property line for wall A uh, which is two feet high from three feet to zero for wall B, which is four feet high from four feet to zero and for wall C, which is six feet high from six feet to zero to increase the maximum permitted paved surface in the required rear yard from 25% to 39%. Can I have the applicant please? Yes. Good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, Vincent. Yes. Okay. Uh, are you going to present your case tonight yourself, or are you going to have someone speak on your behalf? I am going to present my own case, sir. Okay, fine. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, good evening. My name is Vincent Pickford. I'm a retired lieutenant with FDNY and a U.S. Army veteran. I live at Six Country Lane Drive, Kings Park, with my wife, Nancy, who is an elementary school principal and our four children. Uh, we bought our house in 1996 and have always strived to keep it nice and to provide a safe place for our children to grow. When we purchased the property, we immediately began the process of trying to fix up our home, and in this case, namely the backyard. Um, unfortunately, the price of a masonry wall, a retaining wall, to replace the ones that were already on the property exceeded $70,000 in 1997 prices. So we replaced some of the wood and tried to make the backyard as comfortable as possible. As I'm sure the board is aware, the tropical storm known as ICEs, if I'm saying that correctly, um, hit the Smithtown area pretty hard in early August of, of uh, 2020. Our backyard was destroyed. We sustained tree and wind damage that forced us to put in our first homeowner's claim ever. We lost six trees. One of them came from the rear of the property. Uh, the image that's being shown now, it would be coming from the left to the right. Um, and it uh, destroyed the fencing as well as part of um, the now over 20 year old wood wall. Another tree more than 36 inches in diameter, which can be seen on pictures of the paved area, um, leaned over with its root system pushing up through our 25 by 25 uh, paver patio, as well as the deck steps. They've been lifted up uh, off, of their, uh, off of their mounting. And you can see there, they're pretty racked. Um, they're racked from left to right. The banisters are crooked and, and, and unsafe. Um, so um, the deck, sorry. The deck also sustained wind damage. The deck and patio are currently unsafe and unusable. There are at least 14 six foot sections of fence that although I was able to put back together are still damaged and badly leaning. The aging damaged wall lets the dirt from the yard wash through it. So this keeps us from repairing the fence as is. A kid swing set was also destroyed and subsequently removed. Knowing that the only way to correct the major faults of this property was to put in permits for walls and fencing. Um, excuse me one second. Uh, all of the, um, to, for us to do that, I just wanted to mention that all of the odd numbers of Country Lane Drive have retaining walls that require the owner to dig out 
whereas all the even numbers on Country Lane, and by all, I don't mean every one, but, but quite a few of them um, have to fill in, meaning they have to put up a retaining wall and fill in. Um, this kept us from using our backyard for almost a year now. The insurance claim was closed with enough money paid to cover basically the tree removal. It is with this damage in mind um, that we respectfully submit our application for variances that will allow us to finally use almost all of the property in a safe manner. The project will add a finished look to the Cedar Street North side. Um, the general contractor for the work will be Metamorphosis. This is an award-winning Smithtown business with over 16 years of experience. The work was designed by their engineers and landscape architects to provide a beautiful, useful, and safe backyard. They will coordinate with Swim King for the pool installation. Swim King is a family-run business with a great reputation that's been in operation for over 40 years. Uh, I have also, um, I assure the board that no expenses were spared in the preparing for this application from a costly topographic survey where a regular one might have been uh, might have been enough to the numerous plan revisions asked for by the Smithtown Buildings Department um, and, and provided by Metamorphosis engineers and architects. Uh, I have a, a little bit of information on each aspect of the project that I'd like to uh, have put on the record. Um, as far as the pool, there's at least four on our side of Country Lane Drive um, at 816, 22, and 175 Avenue B, which is kind of like right on the corner of Country Lane Drive and Avenue B. He's also a corner house uh, with at least one other of those being a corner. On the other side of the street, there's six pools. At least three of them that I know of also deal with retaining wall issues. They're at uh, 11, uh, sorry, three. 11, 17, 19, 21, and 37 Country Lane Drive. The walls um, are basically already there, but now made of incorrect materials um, and, and, and not safe. And we would be um, requesting a variance to, uh, to move them out to be able to put the backyard back together in a useful manner so that we could take advantage of all that property that for these years we haven't been able to use. Um, the deck is already on the CFO, and um, we would not be replacing it with anything bigger. Um, and, and depending on the cost of lumber, uh, you know, we would see as to when we would do that at all. Um, you know, either fix it or, um, or replace it, but not at any, any increase in size. Uh, the pavers, the paver part of the variance, if you're looking at the, uh, the plan of the house, if you come down the left side of the house, there's also a great issue there. And unfortunately, that doesn't allow for a lawnmower to get down that side of the property. So as, as it stands, um, my, my landscaping com company currently mows that area of the yard with a weed whacker. It doesn't work well and it never looks good. So that's why we're asking to basically pave that area. Um, the fence... Uh, the variance for the fence to be put directly on top of the wall because of the wall's height. And if we had to do the setback, there would be an area of property again, not being used that would, um, that would, uh, that would basically need to be maintained with no access to that area. Uh, it would be on the other side of a fence, six feet, you know, six feet uh, up in the air. So uh, I, I am willing to use a better fence, the, the black aluminum type that allows wind through, and we would um, we would be putting plantings, which I've coordinated with our neighbor behind us as a as a, a gesture of good faith. Um, I'm even going to let the neighbor pick out what type of plantings. That way, privacy is maintained, um, and and we can uh, we can make that area, which is now overgrown with weeds, um, look nice for that neighbor who has a beautiful piece of property um, directly to the rear of us. Um, that's about all I have, um, to state on the project and, uh, would conclude there. Thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone on the board have any questions on this application? Oh, thank you. Thank you. No question. Uh, planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? Uh, Chairman? 
I do not have anybody with their hands raised or in the chat. Okay, thank you. With that said, uh, do I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Vincent. Good night. Have a good night and thank you for your time. You too. And that concludes our meeting for tonight.